During an extraction, the maxillary third molar disappears. Where did it go and how do we retrieve it? Today on The Open Reduction. Welcome to The Open Reduction, the show about everything oral and maxillofacial surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Bolton, and today we're talking about a complication, a dreaded complication when removing a maxillary third molar, displacement into the infratemporal fossa. This patient is a 45-year-old male who had extraction of tooth number one about one week ago at an outside office. He now has concerns of pain, drainage, and limited jaw opening. On exam, I can see that this area is very inflamed. It's very tender to palpation. He does have a maximum incisal opening of about 25 millimeters, so he is restricted. So the next thing I'm going to do is order a cone beam CT, figure out what's going on. The 3D reconstruction of the cone beam CT shows a displaced maxillary third molar. It's superior and posterior to its correct position and it's floating in soft tissue. It's no longer housed in any bone. I show the patient the cone beam CT and explain to him that his tooth unfortunately is displaced in the infratemporal fossa. So what is the infratemporal fossa? The infratemporal fossa is a space in the mid face that is posterior to the maxilla and medial to the mandible. The contents of the infratemporal fossa include the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, the corda tamponi, which is a branch of the facial nerve, the lesser petrosal nerve, and the otic ganglion. The maxillary artery and the pterygoid venous plexus also exist in the infratemporal fossa. So there's a lot of important anatomy here that makes for some scary obstacles when attempting to retrieve a tooth in this area. Now, if this occurred at my office, I would first attempt to retrieve the tooth by extending the incision, try to visualize the tooth, and then cautiously attempt to retrieve it with a hemostat. If retrieval proves impossible at the time of attempted extraction, then the next step is to close the site explain to the patient what happened, obtain a radiograph to determine the exact location of the tooth, and then allow three to four weeks of healing. This three to four weeks of healing is important because the body is going to form a fibrous capsule around this tooth, and that's going to make retrieval easier. I'm not going to attempt to retrieve this tooth today because it's only been one week since the initial surgery. Right now, the tooth is floating in a bed of friable, angry, inflamed mucosa, and if I attempted to retrieve it, it would be nearly impossible. It would just slip higher. So what I'm going to do is allow an additional three weeks of healing. This three weeks is designed to allow the body to form a fibrous capsule around this tooth. It's almost like a cocoon, and what that's going to do is act as a backstop so that the tooth is in slightly more solid bedding. At three weeks, I have a much higher chance of being able to retrieve this tooth without it slipping further superiorly. Please click the like button and subscribe to the channel where you can watch part two of the attempted retrieval of this tooth three to four weeks later. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton. I'll see you next time on The Open Reduction.